Good morning. It is Friday, January 21st, and I am getting books ready for tomorrow morning. The boys went out to Lowe's, getting some stuff for the house, yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. So I am grading Silver and Bronze Age books, which is like my favorite types of books to go through. I've got my coffee already done. Let's do this thing. I gotta show you guys something. I did, I did a thing. An exciting thing, but it was an accident. But I'm actually pretty excited about it. The accident. I did this. Tales to Astonish is 62. I had the Silver and Bronze Age books beside my grading stack. And when I was doing the preview for the sale, it was like 4 in the morning. I'm pretty sure it was like 4 in the morning. And I wasn't thinking about it. Blended in the great. I just went put the grading stack in with the, on the silver bronze age stack and then I started pulling books for the preview and I always try to do like a variety because like the Saturday morning sale is a variety sale of like Marvel a little bit of DC um from the silver and bronze age mostly the stuff that's silver age and so Tales to Astonish is kind of few and far between, so I think I only had two Tales to Astonish books in the sale, so I grabbed both of them. I tried to grab like two of each, two or three of each title, but mostly try to grab two. So, anyways, first appear or first cameo appearance of Humanoid, first cameo appearance of the leader. It's going in $1 star fed. <laughs> it's okay, someone, I think someone's going to get a really good deal, because last time I put Tales to Astonish, it was like one of the early appearances of Ant-Man, I think it was like the third or fourth appearance of Ant-Man, and it sold really low, like the person got an incredible deal, but that always happens with like the earlier Tales to Astonish on Saturday morning, because those, it's so like niche, like Giant Man and Wasp are so niche, um, compared to the other title, like the other characters in the titles. Tales of Astonish with Subby goes wild, but like the Giant Man stuff. So I know this book is like a few hundred bucks, but it's, I don't know. My prediction is, is it's, it's good to go for a really good deal. And I'm usually never wrong. Like I always feel like all the Saturday morning books go for a really good deal, but because we are a shop, a virtual shop, but we're still a shop. Of course we buy a collection. So, you know, it's fun seeing people get the really good deals, you know? We're not taking like severe losses or anything like that. Um, I'll show you guys the other one. I actually have it out of the bag and board, so I'll just show you guys um, the inside too. So here's another one that blended in Tales to Astonish 91. So this is first Abomination cover, and it is his second appearance. He appears like closer to the back of the issue, I think even more so. Okay, yeah, he's in the story because the story that's in the front is not pertaining to this fight those brows All right, Abomination, you've got to be any page now. There you are. Oh, let me straighten it out. You guys are looking at the sideways. I'm like, here you go. <laughs> ah, each second in front of the ray will sap your strength. No. Zuck. Spoof. Yeah, he homie went straight through the wall. Next, the new chapter. All right, so this particular book, although it does present absolutely gorgeous, 
and it needs a press because you can kind of see a little valley right there from that sub crease for when it was folded but it does have a super light sub crease going up and down it does present gorgeous so this one I'm gonna have at a VG plus it is a in gorgeous absolute gorgeous shape but it does have that sub crease and like I've said before, um, I'll flip the pages while I talk. Like I said before, like books that present like really nice like this that um, we've gotten graded always come back a four or five. Always. And I almost feel like that might be like the threshold. Even though some other resources say otherwise, um, just from grading books. Um, ours have always come back a four or five with the sub crease. Because some resources say it could be like a 5.5 five or a 5, that there's more grace on the subcrease, which I definitely think is true. I know a subcrease gets a lot more grace than if it was like at an angle. Look at Submarina. Her name Marina. I always want to call her Submarina. <laughs> but it's name Marina. Um... Subby looking thick as always. And this is definitely going in a wizard bag. You guys know. Saturday morning. Okay, we're back with the Gil Kane. He did some freaking incredible work back in the day for both DC and Marvel. Gil Sugar Lips. Kane <laughs> and Stan the Manly, of course. So funny. All right, DC. Nineteen sixty nine. New Wonder Girl costume. I was so excited when this one came in um, because I also have this in my collection too. So every time I come across a book in a collection I also have in my PC, I get really excited about it. It's so awesome. This is another um, niche book. It is a bigger book. like um, It is a little bit on the pricier end. Especially um, since it's in such incredible condition um, for its time period. I think someone's going to get like a fantastic deal on this one too. Wonder girl, get it girl. I do actually like her older costume better, but that's just me. What do you guys think? Look at that. Look at that splash page. I love a good splash page, especially when it's like inside the book and not just like on that front cover. Oh. Thor shall face them, unflicting, for I am armed with thy love. Oh. Look at that, Stanley and Jack King Kirby. The John Romita cover. Senior. This cover feels as amazing as it looks. It's in gorgeous condition. It's Thor 167. Do you see that? Doom, doom, doom. Now that you have seen me without my mask, you can't leave here alive. The prisoner, the power, and Dr. Doom. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe I'm saying this, but this book is in fine, very fine condition, which equates to a 7-0. Guys, 15 cent Thor. This book is perfect. It might even be better than that. Oh 
Oh my gosh, look how good this buck looks. I even like double checked, <laughs> like triple checked. Using the grading guide and then looking at books of like the same book graded online. The end of the skinny body, two weeks later. <laughs> I love these ads. Look at that, oh my goodness. Doom is a G. Do not be afraid, my dear. Look at those crazy eyes. The Prisoner, The Power, and Dr. Doom. Dun, dun, dun. Oh my gosh, it's a good book. So this is an interesting one I want to show you guys. I got Hulk 126. I random, I rarely um, get books that I have to check for a tier seal. So I'm going to show you guys this one. Kind of like what I look for. So tear seal is one of those things you really got to look out for. Especially in the vintage books. More often more often in keys that are um, trying to be like restored and repaired. So the way I first, um, like, I don't know, it's hard to explain. Well, I guess it's not super hard to explain. There's like a checklist in my head of things that I look out for when I'm looking at vintage books and they just kind of like become like one of those things that are like memorized, like when your eyes catch it, um, if you know what I'm saying. Anyways. Tear seals are one of those things. So what caught my eye about this one to check it for a tear seal is that this doesn't look like it's probably hard to tell over the camera, but this whole color break situation looks more than just a color break and it has like texture to it. It's risen like this. This is a color break, right? But when I run my finger across it and when I look at it, it looks flat. This does not. It looks like it's rigid. And so does this one. So I checked it um, with a regular light already. Um, I checked it with my black light, light too because like a lot of like residue and glues and stuff show up with the black light. So I already like went like boom, boom on the inside front cover and um, in the dark just to like see through. I also shined the light through it as well to see if I could see anything. Um, what I noticed when looking at it is it is one of those manufacturer defects where the book cover kind of got creased a little bit. So it's not a tear seal. It's not a tear seal. It's just a crease um, in the cover. You know how you see She-Hulk 1 has it a lot. And so does X-Men 129, Kitty Pride, um, Where, like, you'll see, like, a grooved um, crease. And where the page was, like, slightly, like, by a hair creased over. And, like, when it was made. So that's what that is, and it also has a little bit of color break. So basically what a tear seal is, is just basically what it sounds. The page got teared somewhere along the lines, and someone sealed it so that it was no longer a tear. So anyways, I really get examples to show you guys. That one was not a tear seal. I checked it for a hot minute. Um, I was not going to put you guys to that because it probably wouldn't have, like, in person it looks cool. But I'm imagining, like, if you're watching this and all of a sudden, like, there's, like, lights everywhere. I, I feel like it would have just, like, been, like, a hot mess to watch. So, anyways, I wanted to show you guys that. So, I'm going to finish up this book. Um, and, yeah. 
All right, so check it out. Journey into Mystery 125. Such a dope book. Jack Kirby. Stanley. The cover. This is incredible. Some Hercules. He does not look happy. So, this one presents really nicely. Um, the interior pages are really good. Look at the rainbow bridge. Oh my gosh, so awesome. Pages on the inside, I know it's hard to tell on the camera, they're like, they're definitely off-white, but they do have a little bit of tanning um, around the edges of some of the pages. Um, the cover is great. It doesn't have like any like intense creases like um, in the core of the cover, but where I'm really about to hit this book like super heavy is that the cover is... Um, it's a little brittle. Like, it's still, like, supple. Like, it's still, like, good. It's not, like, crumbling or anything like that or falling to pieces. But it has definitely um, aged. Not as well as I'd liked. But I would have given it better than... I give it a VG+. Plus um, because, like I've said in um, another video, like... You can especially see, like, around, like, all in here. Oh, there you go. You can see that a lot better. All around the edges. Got some heavy creases. And it feels really brittle. Not to the point where, like, if you're flipping, like, if you're reading this, like, chilling with the book, it's not going to, like, crumble in your lap or anything. Um, but it does have, like, heavy aging wear around the edges. And the spine is just really creased all up. Like, big time, this book has been so loved. So, I hit this book a little hard because of that with the BG+. Plus. We've graded books um, that look similar to this, where the core of the book looks gorgeous, but the aging is really, and the wear and stuff is, like, really severe around the edges. And those books have always come back around um, a, like a four or five. So that's what I am going to say this book at because if it wasn't for this, like it, if it were not for that, this book, like if it wasn't for this and like the tanning and stuff on the edges and up here, this book would easily be like a fine plus, but it does have that loved spine, loved margins. It still is an incredible book, though. Look at the cover. It's so good. I'm going to peek at this, um, the grading guide, too. I'm at a 5.0 in here. This book here that's shown as an example, um, it has, like, severe wear um, all along. I mean, yeah, it does have a little bit of animal chewing. Yucky. Um, over here, so... That book we just like that didn't have animal cheese. So, um, but the examples in the in the five O's um, have really good examples of um, books of the same um, condition where the core of the book looks good, but the spine is just like really a hot mess. I do feel like this, like comparing the notes of like. Um, a five. This is probably more closer to that, but you guys know. Um, I just want people to be happy. It definitely does not have <laughs> that journey mystery does not have those issues. Um, but like this one here has really severe spine wear as well. So just showing you examples of like the fives. Here's a four or five in the over street guide. So you've got this huge spine split, which, and rust on the staples in a four or five, which this book did not have. So I think whoever, well, I know whoever gets that is going to be happy because it's Jack Kirby Stanley, but 
Um, I always like people being happy with the condition. And these covers are pretty severe too. Not too, too bad, but like this one's got like creases all um, on the inner portions of the book and it has like that severe spine wear, like a four or five. Jack Kirby alert, Kirby alert. <laughs> All right, classic Jack Kirby faces, right? Look. Fanned out. It's fantastic for 96 and 97. Monster from the Lagoon. The Mad Thinker and his androids, death. Alright, I want to show you guys next some stuff uh, that's really cool to look out for. Um, so this is Werewolf by Night 21. Dope book, but it also has a lizard marble value stamp. Marble value stamps are usually going to be at the very last page of the book or like right in the middle. So let's find this quick. All right, there it is. It was so hard turning the pages with one hand. Uh, Marble Value Stamp 72 from Series A. This is a lizard. Um, the difference between Series A and Series B is Series B is like puzzle pieces, aka. A ridiculously hard achievement I'm assuming that was almost like a mission impossible but it must have been cool at the time um, so here is this issue with the marble value stamp and then I'm showing you guys by night 22 so this one actually has the marble value stamp missing so like I said before marble value stamp is either gonna be on the, like the very 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 last page so like this is an inside back cover sometimes a marble stamp value stamp will be like right there but in this case this um world by night has theirs in the middle so you can find it pretty easy that's one of those things where um i always tell my friends when they get into like the vintage comics like hey make sure check the marble value stamp because it's something that collectors do love and is very easy to miss if you're not going counting your pages or going page by page um, so, story is complete, which is cool. Um, what I'll do, since this is, like, consecutive numbers, is I'll put, um, this with, as, like, a fun bonus add-in, um, because it still holds good value, because the story is still, in the story is still complete. Um, comics with the value, the value stamp missing is still, um, desired. Story is complete and stuff like that, so, um... I was going to pair them anyways, but especially now this is missing the marble value stamp. I definitely want to um, pair the two. So what did I have this grade at? I had this grade as a fine, fine copy, marble value stamp missing, story is complete. So that's how I will um, describe the condition during the sale. Okay, so the next thing I want to show you guys is this. Can you notice what is going on with this book why i am sharing this in particular let's grab this you guys will be able to see it in just a second grabbing a bag and board so i flipped it same book you see it line it up just so you guys can see you can like in person you can see this immediately can you tell me what's going on here? This book has been trimmed. Um, pretty bad. Uh, bad trimming job. Um, it definitely cuts into the panels. For sure. It's not necessarily ruining the story, but it's definitely trimmed, like, really bad. So, this book is still dope. It's still a giant-sized Dracula, 
number five. So what I'm going to do here is there is a giant size Dracula number two or yeah, number two or three. I can't remember going in to the auction. So what I'll do is I'll auction off the Dracula, the giant size Dracula number two, and then I'll, after the auction's done, I'll throw this in as a freebie. The reason I want to wait until after the auction's over to be like, hey, I'm gifting this with the book is because um, I just don't want this to um, be a part of the value. Like, I don't want people to bid up the other book um, because this is with it, if that makes sense. Um, because it is so rough. Um, I would rather throw this in as like a really fun add-in freebie gift because it's still dope. It's still gorgeous and glossy. Um, the spine's a little rough, but I mean that trim job is um, something else, y'all. A good way to like um, if you feel like a book is trimmed, a good way to um, do it is to measure the bottom and the top, or. Um, line it up with a bag and board. A lot of times, like, you can catch it with your eye as well. This one was definitely, um, an eye catcher for sure. All right, so here we've got two really good examples of, um, reader copies with the tape on them. Um, so the collection that these came out of in particular, like everything else, was, like, banging in condition and then the Dracula books and the Werewolf by Night books looked like they all went to work and like were read by everyone of the co-workers and like super loved which I can't blame them I mean the insides are incredible the story's good um but you can see tape tape amateur repair for sure tape here and then the tape on this one wraps around to the back so I'm going to the overstreet guide here so at a good very good 3.0 you'll see that amateur repairs might be present tape and other amateur repairs may be present so this also will tell you that um, those kind of things are going to be throughout the grades below that obviously um, so I have this one graded at a good, which equates to a 2.0, and this a good plus. Um, both are definitely reader copies, so that's what I'm going to put in the detail. I'm going to pair them together, reader copies, tape on cover, um, and that's what I'll put. Um, I've, I've asked a few times, like pulled our Instagram community and asked our whatnot community as well, um, our buyers, and I've asked them, let me take a seat, I've asked them, I'm like, guys, I have, like, some books that we had were, like, incredible keys with, like, a piece of tape on it, or it'll, like, have a rough back on it, and it's like, guys, like, do you want me to auction off these reader copies of these books? And everyone across the board was like, do it, yes, please, because... Everyone had a good point, and I, this, I'm this type of buyer as well, is they were saying that, you know, they won't have another, like some people won't have an, an opportunity to buy a key issue or complete their runs of like Werewolf by Night or something like that, um, unless they can buy it um, with defects or like tape on the cover, like cheaper, so that they can put it in their collection, um, and like they can fit those that condition in their budget. I'm that same type of buyer, especially with Matt Baker. I buy really, really, really severely low grade um, Matt Baker books. Actually, one of my Matt Baker books looks like it got ran over by a car and then flew into a mud puddle. It's so bad. If I could give it less than a 0.5, I would, but I got it and I love it. So I definitely understand that. So that's why I um, definitely make sure to, um, even though we get these awesome books, some of them come in like low grade condition, we still put them in, um, in the auction to give everyone the opportunity at all budget ranges. Because I know like the Silver Bronze Age books, like you saw earlier, like some of those books are really pricey. Um, but I love giving like a price variety. Um, so there's something in there for all budgets all um niches for silver bronze age all character loves and stuff like that so anyways i'm gonna keep going 
it is no longer morning it's about to be night guys i've been working all day long but that's okay smalls and tony are having their guys time together so that's always nice that they get to have their days tony has the day off so it's really nice don't get a ton of Charlton comics that often. So this is Peacemaker 3 from 1967. Our future world. I heard Peacemaker was a really good show. Actually, I need to watch it. All right. So it is bedtime for Tiny Human. I just got done grading a lot of books guys I've been sitting here in the same spot for hours but hashtag worth it because I got I got so much done hey hi how you doing oh you know Hanging out. so Tony is uploading things for tonight's auction hey and I'm about to go finish getting ready. Got some of my makeup on, some of it not. <sighs> I need to finish getting ready. Danielle and I are supposed to be live on YouTube in 15 minutes. <gasps> Don't tell her. I know, I need to hurry up. All right, setup is done. All thanks to Tony. Yes, my Christmas tree is still up and well. I'm going to finish getting ready. What? We'll see. All right, it has been 10 minutes. I'm ready. Yeah. I'm ready to YouTube. I'm ready to be on the YouTube with Danielle. I'm super excited. We're unboxing, well, she's unboxing, I'm hanging out. A half a million dollar game collection, babe. What? what you yeah. Say? say that one more time? Half a million dollars, $500,000 game collection. Okay. It's You're unboxing crazy. two houses, two to three houses? Pretty much. We're unboxing two of our homes tonight. That's going to be fun. All right, I've got my, this is not sponsored by Celsius, but I always get asked when I'm constantly drinking. This energy drink makes me really hyper, and it gives me a lot of energy, and I drink it in a wine glass because there's something about drinking in a Finish wine you. glass. I think everyone should try drinking out of a wine glass. After Smalls goes to bed, which is our little one, I drink out of a wine glass because there's something about it that just is so uplifting. Water, juice, soda, whatever you got. Coffee, but cold, of course. Um, yeah. I think I recommend everyone trying. And, yep. All right, so I'm going to roll. We're streaming in a couple minutes, three minutes to be exact. Tony's still uploading the auction from tonight. I'm literally going to roll out of YouTube and go straight into an auction that we're doing. And then going straight into uploading the books to whatnot. This is a freaking beast of a work day today, for sure. There are more of these days, um, actually. <laughs> these days actually come pretty frequent. But, um, yeah, it's definitely a long work one, for sure. So, all right, Danielle just sent me the link for StreamYard. I'm going to roll. You guys won't even notice the difference because it's going to time lap in a second. <laughs> we cheese in. Invoices. Um, there's no order to what boxes got what. <laughs> we made it. Oh, I just got done streaming on YouTube though. Here you go. It's snowing slash sleeting outside, but I'm excited about the snow. Oh my gosh. I haven't seen it snow in so long. I used to live in Maine and Tony used to live in Idaho, so I've been stalking the outside because we were supposed to get this snow slash ice storm. Don't look at my kitchen. Sale's almost over. All right, so the sale is done. Alexa, off. I always forget. Don't want the video coming down because I didn't shut off Alexa. <laughs> All right. So the whatnot sale is over. Um, it's Friday night. 
a lot of really, really good deals went tonight. So that's always good when a book gets rehomed and people get good deals. So cutting tape, I've got a lot of tape to cut, like a hundred pieces of tape. Um, I'm not going to put you guys through all this tape cutting, but uh, once I start taping down the books, or actually when I'm done taping down the books, um, I'll show you guys all of them um, before I start keynoting, because before I start keynoting the books, then you go in alphabetical order first. So I'm going to do this, tape them down, show you guys after they're in order, and then keynote. Probably for the rest of the night. It's 10 p.m. right now. You guys have seen me like on and off at this counter for over 12 hours now. Oh my gosh. I don't think she's going to go out. This is Ileana's first time with snow. It's snowing and sleeting all at the same time. Hey, Ileana. Oh my gosh, it is literally after midnight. There's kids playing outside in the snow. Is it really? Yeah, that's awesome. That's funny. Uh, this is her first snow. <laughs> she's like, time to feast. <laughs> she doesn't know where to start. Okay, she's cold now. Oh my gosh. This is so exciting. Dave, I'm so excited right now. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I just got done making a reel. We're uploading the book still. And I heard it starting to come down. <gasps> Look at this snow in my messy house. <sighs> All right. We just finished loading in the last book. They helped a lot. Thank goodness. So when I said... That might be up till four. It's actually only gonna two thirty. So excited! There's still snow on the ground, so I'm really hoping it's still there in the morning for our little one. Oh my gosh, he's gonna be so excited! Juliana's steps are gone. Yeah, I know her steps are gone, so it has snowed more. So everything is loaded for the silver and bronze age sale, guys. I spent a crazy like 17 hour work day. <sighs> um, so guess what? I'm going to bed. <laughs> I'm going to bed and I'm waking up in a couple hours. Um, but I'm going to bed earlier than usual. So I'm actually pretty excited. So tomorrow morning at 9.30 a.m., Danielle and I are going to be on Whatnot, streaming away, doing the silver and bronze age sale. As you guys saw, there's some dope stuff going on. Um... I know I promised you guys a flip through, so I'll do that quick before I hop off. Um, tomorrow, after the sale's done, I'm taking the rest of the day off. I'm so excited. We don't have any sales the rest of the day tomorrow. No sale on Sunday. But we do have Mutant Monday, which I think we're going to start doing um, a double theme on Monday. Like a double theme. So, like x-men we always do x-men on mondays but we might like add in like spider-man a new theme to intertwine with the mutants every monday so anyways guys let me flip through these i'm going to bed and excited all right second kingpin some spidey bondage some spidey picture frame and origin stuff spidey getting his chest stomped in by kangaroo Spidey Mobile. Um, Scarlet something. Can't remember. Third identity of Kang. Um, what's his face becomes a general, I believe, in this one. Sergeant Rock. It's another Sergeant Rock one. Something special about that. I totally forgot in this moment. Um, Bat Hulk. Oh, Batman cool. and Dead Man. I know that Bat Hulk is like super dope. Some incredible Jack Kirby cap. He did the interiors on that one too, so it's awesome. This one's pretty interesting. Um, Doctor Doom and uh, oh my gosh, what's the guy with the big head? Oh my gosh, it just fell out of my brain. Modok. They create a Bucky robot in that one. Um, early Thanos and Drax, Queen of the Black Coast. 
first appearance. I know. Daredevil reveals himself. Stuntman. What's this one? I think, uh, not just a bondage cover, but it's the debut of her sword. Valkyries. First heavy Black Panther fight. Can't remember what's dope about this. Oh, it's, um, Second Bat something. Man, Man Bat? Man Bat, yeah, yeah. Oh. Did you read that because of the cover? But it's also the first appearance of, uh, his wife who becomes She Bat or something like that. She Bat? <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, for real though. Um, Jack Kirby, Fantastic Four. Yeah, same thing here. Jack Kirby, Fantastic Four. And then Virgin of Annihilus. Let's get some more. All right. Next stack. <laughs> Second Killamonger. Um, this is the last um, title where it says The Journey into Mystery before it goes into Thor, but it's also like the third. Um, oh my gosh. Herc. Third Herc. There we go. Luke Cage here for hire. It's a duo. Not Brand Eck, those spoof stories. They really love these on Saturday morning. They're so fun. Um, Jack Kirby and Stan Lee like leaded these two with the rest of like the whole gang of writers and artists. Um first Star Lord and Comics. And his origin is in that. Bill Sankovich cover on that, too, by the way. So this is the first appearance and death of Bull's Eye. Not Bull's Eye. Two words. Bull's Eye. This guy came before Bull's Eye. Totally different character. Um, Peacemakers 3 from the show. Sergeant Fury 38 because Hala. Sergeant Fury. And then 39. Strange Tales, 129. This one's dope. Oh boy, this is gonna bother me because it just fell out of my brain. Strange Tales, 179. There's something really dope about this and it just fell out of my brain. All right, Subby 14. Gorgeous, gorgeous cover on that one. Same with this one. Subby and Doctor Doom fighting it out in a wizard bag. Got some name Marita drama going on. So Mariner 37, more Subby Doom, picture frame cover, which I love. So good. Got some Subby bondage going on. Tales of Suspense 71. Look at that. This is such a big one. All right, Tales of Astonish 62, first appearance, or first cameo, excuse me. First cameo uh, appearance of the leader and humanoid. Second appearance of Abomination and his first time on the cover. Tales of Sage 91. Showed you guys this earlier. Wonder Girl gets her new suit. I liked her old suit better. What about you, babe? Yeah? Mm -hmm. What's your plan? Oh, Rocket League. All right. Thor 182, Doom, 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 Doom. Did you just say Doom, Doom, Doom? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Odin whooping his kids. Alright, Thor 223, the dope bondage cover and a wizard bag. This is the first battle of Dracula and Werewolf by Night and Werewolf by Night. 15. I was asked to bring more wolf, werewolf this week. Last week I had only brought, I think, one or two werewolf by night auctions. I think it was just one. So I had a ton of requests to bring more. So I brought a couple more werewolf by night 21 and 22 duo. I showed you guys this earlier. Then issue 25. This has a really dope Marvel value stamp. I think it's Marvel value stamp Submariner. Um. Dr. Glare Knight versus Werewolf, 28 and 29. Had to pair those two together. A little bit of a spicy cover. Then this one is super cool. Um, it's the teaser for Moon Knight. Obviously, it's Werewolf by Night 31. 32, he has his first appearance. So this one's pretty cool. And then, oh boy. Oh, Origin of those Deviants and the Eternals. And then it's also when What If becomes canon in one of sort uh, series. 
All right, there's a couple more. These books are a little bit thicker and they're in the golden age bag, so they didn't really quite fit in my box here. And the little plastic one. But um, this one I showed you guys earlier. Reader copies. Um, can I have those? And then the Giant Size Dracula 3. And then this is the first um, John Byron cover. So I'm going to pull this one to the side while this one auctions. And then I'm going to add that one in as a gift freebie. Journey into Mystery 120. So go. All right. And then a couple Green Lanterns. Green Lantern 30. They are minor keys, but I have forgotten what they are. Forgive me, I don't know my DC like I know my Marvel. And 1957 Journey into Mystery. This was in the first year of the Silver Age, so it does fit in the Silver Age sale. But the year after Golden Age ended, boom. Bill Everett cover too, it's freaking incredible. And then I also put in a slab, super early Batgirl. First time Batgirl and Little Bat Might Meet. So cute. Off-white pages. CGC 6.5. So everyone will have fun with this one. It's always fun putting like a slab in there. Um, here and there when we have them. And that's everything. Finally. Thanks for watching. This, I think this is going to be like a one hour vlog. I think. <laughs> Thanks for watching, oh, guys. I did my hair today, too. You did do your hair. <laughs> On a day off. I'm just your joking. Day off it, looks to like, that. it looks a I mess. Know. I'm just messing with you. <laughs> Thanks for watching. All right. Let's go. Like. Uh, subscribe. What else? What huh? Oh, I can't oh, even talk. the little ring dingy the Notification ring bell. Yes. Thing. Ding, ding, ding. Um, and let us know what you like seeing. And all that good stuff. So, yeah. Thanks for watching. Bye.